Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a 2022 Honda Ridgeline. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Stockton 12 Honda here in Utah for giving me some time with this Ridgeline. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get right into the video. Starting under the hood of the Ridgeline, we have a Natchez aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a nine speed automatic transmission. It's good for 280 horsepower and then 262 pound feet of torque. And the Ridgeline comes standard with all wheel drive. And this is the exact same setup that you have in the Honda Pilot because the Ridgeline is basically a Pilot with a truck bed. And we'll kind of talk about that uh, more throughout the video. I think it's interesting how Honda has two different like points where you can put the hood props. You can have it kind of open or really open. And it actually looks pretty cool with the uh, hood open like that. Now let's, and you guys can see that transition there is pretty cool. Let's actually go over the um, front end here with the Ridgeline. So you guys can see here with the body lines are actually pretty sharp here on the Ridgeline. And again, you guys will see a lot of Honda Pilot. Uh, they do change a few distinct things with like the front grille and everything to make it look more truck-like with the Ridgeline. Um, but you know, a lot of it is a carryover. And then you guys can see there with the headlights and then the daytime running lights. And you notice there with the Honda logo, how it's gigantic. Uh, it actually also doubles the sensor, which is pretty cool. You've got the turn signal indicator down below and then you can see the fog lights as well. And there's also parking sensors integrated into the front end and they've done a solid job, I think with uh, just integrating those into the plastic parts of the bumper so that it, you know, just doesn't get in the way of the design of the front end. Uh, but, you know, overall, I actually think it looks pretty good from a front end perspective, especially with the venting. Now, this is the HPD edition. And so it's got these more aggressive looking wheels and more aggressive tires on the package as well. So you guys can see here with the front suspension. Uh, and something to mention with the Ridgeline is it's a unibody vehicle. Then you guys can see here for the tire width and the wheel size, 245 millimeter tires, 18 inch wheels. So that's kind of more of like a, you know, SUV setup because a lot of trucks will have, you know, 275 millimeter tires um, or at least, you know, 265. So a little bit thinner, but you can see here from a side view perspective. Again, I think the truck looks actually pretty cool. Uh, so you've noticed with the door handles, how those are in chrome. And it's kind of interesting because that's uh, clashes a little bit with the stuff that you have on the HPD uh, portion of the truck where it kind of makes everything dark and you guys can see it stands for Honda performance development uh, it's kind of Honda's way of saying that they've tuned this to be a little bit different than the regular ridge line and big thing is the wheels and the tires on the HPD and then obviously the sticker right the sticker adds like 20 horsepower I'm just being funny um, but you can see here from a rear perspective right with the whole tailgate setup and actually like the HPD logo there on the back I think it looks pretty cool with the racing flag and again like I said it is all-wheel drive notice you got the exhaust tips there at the bottom with the receiver hitch now I couldn't tell you how the all-wheel drive system performs off-road because I've never taken one of these off-road Honda if you're watching this you should send it out to Utah so we can take one off-road um, but I can tell you I did take a Hyundai Santa Cruz off-road and that has an all-wheel drive system as well and that's kind of like a unibody truck thing and it actually did surprisingly well and you guys can see here with the two different uh, handles with the truck so you basically have the upper one and the lower one this one swings it out like a barn door which is really cool it's really practical despite everything that people say about the Ridgeline it has one of the coolest truck bed setups in the truck industry you can see the spare tire there underneath now obviously the new Rivian R1T's copied this but that costs like more than twice as much as the Ridgeline you guys can see there with the lights in the bed and so yeah I think that you know Honda just nailed it from a practicality standpoint with the bed for this truck. And again, a lot of other automakers now copying Honda with their setup, right? Ram has a similar uh, tailgate with their multifunction tailgate. And you've got Chevy and GMC with their multi-pro tailgate, right? And I'm sure Ford will come out with something soon. They have the step in the uh, tailgate, but they'll probably come up with something more. But aside from that, it actually uh, also, from a payload capacity perspective, it's you know on par with other mid-sized trucks. So it's, it's, and same towing is, you know, a little bit lower than mid-sized truck competitors. That's the one thing that you could technically knock the ridge line for, uh, is it does have a lower towing capacity. It's like 5,000 pounds, but here are the seats and you can see you've got this nice upgraded interior with this 
package, so it's a little bit more upscale, right? And if you did take this off-road since it's an HPD, then these seats would actually be pretty easy to clean off. They do have some perforations in them, um, but you know, not the worst thing from a cleanup perspective. And space back there, again, mid-size truck, so it's it's decent, um, but it's not like full-size truck where it's like a you know couch in the back. And then here's the door panel at the front. So first off, you guys will notice here with the padding there for the driver, and then notice the front two windows are automatic. And then you guys can see with the door lock and unlock. And there's a quick look at the mirrors. Then notice the gas cap release as well. Memory seats. So it's got a bunch of nice luxury features. And then you can see with the seats themselves, again, just notice with all of the padding and then the contrasted stitching on top of that, I think that'll look good. And then you've got your power adjustments for the seats. And then with the pedal layout down below, pretty normal setup. And then also with the little hood latch release. Now it's got a bunch of controls here for like the parking sensors, lane departure, stability control, you know, light controls, all that. So just know a lot of stuff is next to the steering wheel, including your econ mode and the mirror adjustments. And then you've got the gauge cluster. It's like half analog, half screen. Pretty normal thing in the car industry nowadays. And you can see here the steering wheel set up with the ridge line. Uh, notice here with the controls on the front of the steering wheel, again, pretty normal setup uh, if you're familiar with Hondas. I like how they have the heated steering wheel button on the steering wheel, right? Just makes sense logically. And then you actually have paddle shifters. That's pretty rare. Um, not a lot of mid sized trucks will have paddle shifters. But you can also see here with the center infotainment system, and then notice the climate controls down below. It does have dual zone climate system, heated seats for the front, and also wireless phone charger as well. We've got some cup holders right there. And then you can see right next to it, the transmission selector with all the buttons. Some people say they don't like it, but it's easy to use. And then you have like your drive mode select and then your auto stop start. Center console, um, you know, straight out of the pilot again. Practical though, so got that going for it. Like the little armrest thing. Cause you don't have like a center console armrest, so they have to put seat armrests. And then you can see there with the dash and the glove box. And then you actually do get a sunroof, which is another nice thing. It's not a panoramic, but I don't think there's any mid-sized truck that offers panoramic. So it's not like they're lagging behind the competition. But got to look at the window sticker. So you can see again, 2022 Ridgeline. And it's built off of the RTLE package for this HPD edition. Notice that almost everything is standard equipment. That's kind of just a Honda thing to do, right? But you can see the base MSRP there before packages, right? And then notice with the HPD package, what that adds on, and then also there's a destination charge on top of that. Total MSRP, right, $47,240. And yeah, that is the HPD edition ridge, ridge line. Wow, can't talk.